Tina Koto Katoa, na mihi nui ki a Koto Katoa. Um, so I've only had three minutes for my presentation, so I'm going to concentrate on um, just, just three points of my submission. For your information, my attachment is on page, repeated twice in your attachments, page 125 and again on page 128. So, I couldn't find um, it. It's Thank important you that, that you read that attachment. I realise the way, now the way that information is presented, I should have put more into the, into the pro forma um, for you to see the reasons for my um, requests. Um, so the second thing is that um, I know that you've had a lot of submissions on boundary changes. That's part of your representation review, but I think there's a lot of, lot of other issues raised in submissions, and I was disappointed in the, in the report that you received that the, um, some of the issues raised, particularly the one about um, multi-member wards, wasn't addressed um, in, in any depth in your um, staff report. So hopefully you'll address that in the um, final um, proposal. So my, um, my submission is around... Um, not supporting single member wards, except for Banks Peninsula, so different from what um, my learned friend Peter was saying. So it, I'm, I'm asking that you amend your proposal so that you have wards based on the community board area. So I'm using the language of the local government, uh, the local electoral act. So each ward, each community board area would be a ward, and in each ward you elect three members, um, except for Banks Peninsula and then you subdivide each of those wards for the community board um, um, elections. Now, my reasons for this, and it's um, is for, to have effective, fair and diverse representation, um, which is what your goal is in, in this representation review. The, um, it's really well document, documented that multi-member wards do produce um, more diverse representation, and I've done a very simple and fairly course analysis of the last seven elections, and I've only taken, the only uh, attribute I've taken is gender, and I've done that on a, on a binary gender, and I apologise for that, but there's not enough information to, to um, do any more in-depth um, analysis. But you'll see that, um, so I've taken each of the, uh, the, each of the seven elections, I've put the line where you've changed from multi-member to um, single member in 2016, and I've looked at the number of candidates, men, women, and the percentage of women. And you'll see in the candidates um, list that prior to having single member wards, so around about 35 to 40 per cent of uh, women as candidates, and then in the last election it's dropped to only 15 per cent, seven out of uh, 46 candidates. So um, you, get, you get fewer people wanting to stand when you have single member wards, and you get fewer, less diversification in the people that want to stand. As far as those people elected, um, you can see in the four years from 2001 to 2010, we were up around the 50%, greater than 50%. When I first became a councillor in 2001, there were um, 14 women out of the 24. Um, and I think 2013 is an anomaly, it's a post-earthquake anomaly and a whole lot of other reasons which I won't go into today. But since you've had a single member award, you're down to only a third of the members being, um, being women. So, um, I think that's, as an example, you could look at other, other aspects of diversity if you had the time and, and got into the deep research. The, the other, th other thing, and um, just um, Councillor Goff raised the issue of councillors representing the whole city. I think if there's... Um, can I go back? Um, if there's three member wards, those three members um, are more likely, they represent a larger area, and I, you know, I'm not, I don't love at large elections, but they represent a larger area, and they're more likely to represent the views of the city rather than a small, um, small ward such as um, Heathcote. Um, and the other, other thing is that they, there's people available to cover absences, for example, in the near future, Coastal Ward is not going to have a representative, but in, under this model, they would still have two representatives. Um, so I, I think there's a lot of reasons why, why I can't go into them any more deeper in the time that I have. But I do ask in your final proposal that you do address this issue, do, do think about it, um, do, do argue whichever way you're going to go. Um, and I would also suggest that you get advice from Dr Jean Drage, who lives in our city and is a local government academic and, and one of the few in the country who has done a lot of work on this. Um, the, the second um, two points are around STV and Māori representation. So Māori representation, I understand that you've taken the views of mana whenua and, and decided not to have Māori wards. 
and I respect and admire the way that you're engaging with mana whenua, and that's under the Naitahu Settlement Act, in my view. But under the Local Government Act, you need to take in the views of all Māori. And I'm, I'm concerned that that hasn't been done in this case. And I would ask that before um, leading up to the next election, so probably in 2003, um, you have a decent discussion around Māori wards uh, with the whole city, because it isn't just, just a Māori issue. So, and it isn't just a mana whenua issue. Um, so, and, but in the interim, in my written submission, I suggest that you do similar to what Canterbury Regional Council has done and have mana whenua representations on your standing committees of a whole. Um, and that's allowed under the Local Government Act, and it gives a voice for Māori without needing to have Māori wards. And my last point is that I would ask that um, leading up to the following, the next tri um, election, so in 2000, before September 2003, you resolve to use STV as a um, way that we vote. Now, I say all this in context of uh, a review of the local government um, arrangements uh, that have been announced and are being undertaken. I don't know. They won't have effect for the next election, but they certainly will have effect um, for the 2005 election. So that's um, my submission, Madam Mayor and Councillors, and I'm um, happy to take questions. What? Yeah, I'm going to allow some questions. Um, Sorry, I don't uh, know how long I've taken. No, 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 I'm going to allow it because um, it's such a substantial submission. So, uh, Sam. Yeah, thank you, uh, Chrissy, for coming in. Could someone put the slide back up about the woman representation? I just was interested. I thought that was a, a, a really fascinating slide that you've brought in or put together. Mm. Um, do you think one of the reasons potentially could be whether they're candidates or councillors, like the abuse people receive in these days, whether it's social media and the like, that put people off? What, what would your view be on that? I think it, I, I absolutely respect people who stand, stand for um, local government. It's a tough place to be, and I don't know whether it's abuse or that the having to go, you know, whether you don't, don't want to door knock or don't want to put yourself forward. I think women probably tend to put themselves forward less. I, I, wouldn't, I, I haven't got any, any evidence about the abuse, but I do think it's um, probably more difficult for women to stand in when it's a single ward councillor, um, their chance of success is probably assessed to be, to be lower, and so that puts them off standing. But people generally wouldn't be perturbed by, um, I guess, sort of ongoing abuse, whether they're a candidate or a councillor? Well, I, I don't know. I don't think there's an issue for the representation review myself, but no, you need right, to deal okay. with that in other ways, probably. Okay, thank you. But the focus here is on the on the the evidence of the demonstrated outcome. Yeah, of having yeah. a diverse representation around the table that we can recognise people. Um, yeah, that um, represent I have us. Melanie. Um, three snappy questions. One is, would you say that it would be? Um, would you um, agree with it would be better to have more elected members? More people on council. I, I think 16 is a really good compromise. I think I actually do think 24 was too many. Yeah. Um, I was I was there. It was hard, you know. It was hard, hard work trying to get consensus and, and to work with others. So no, I think 16 is a good a good number. And I thought 12 was too few. Yeah, and um, I mean, I'm thinking about Sproden, Kashmir, Sproden, Heathcote, um, but because I don't know about other areas' history, but um, would you? So that having members elected at large um, means that you can have members elected from the same geographical area, therefore having similar opinions to each other as opposed to the system that we now have, if you look at who used to represent the area. So I don't understand the question, Sam, at all. So what I'm saying is in Spraden Heathcote and Spraden Kashmir, we used to have councillors elected from a very similar geography within the area, within the board area, and now with separate wards we have them elected from different parts of the ward board area. So you're advocating, you're, that's So I'm wondering if you've taken that ward. into account in your submission. Yeah. Um, it, it is an issue that because of the combination of wards, there's, and I'll use one that I know well, so the Burwood Coastal Linwood Ward, um, if, if, if the, when we had a Burwood Pegasus Ward, the Burwood um, turnout was higher, yeah. um, so you've got a higher voting number in Burwood because it was higher, higher economic status, social economic status, and, and that could apply to any of these. And I think that's just how Christchurch is. It's Christchurch is a diverse city and you've got a mix of, of, of people across the ward. And so if, if you subdivide based on communities of interest, you do tend to group, um, group people like that. So yes, there is a, there, there is a risk of getting, and, and say Burwood, Linwood Coastal, of getting two people from Burwood and no one from Coastal, um, and that's a risk that you no take. But I think 
I still think the diversity that you can get is better, the weight sits on the diversity rather than in what that sort of um, concern about single. And one, not one more easy. point is just in the, um, in the last election, um, we had seven women run in single member wards and five of those women actually run, so it's a huge, did, were you aware of that? So about 71% of the women that ran in the last election actually yeah. got and, a place on council. And, and it, it's, a, it's a trend right through. So you look back in, um, in the early days, like in, 2020, in 2001, 40% of the candidates were women and 58% of women were selected. So often the you know, women do get elected if, the, if there's that choice to have. So, yeah. And, um, yeah. Um, Sarah? Thanks so much, Chrissy. Um, two quick points. Firstly, that the bottom number, second one up, the 33% in 2016, I think it's 25. I think you've included Leanne, because actually it's only four out of 16. I was doing it later. Yeah, no, yeah. Wasn't I, four out of 16 you. councils yeah. were female. Um, but the other one is when the, the discussion you're having over Burwood, for example, um, and where councillors might get elected from if we had slightly at large, because councillors don't currently have to live in the wards that they're elected to anyway. So at the moment, for example, do you think that single council ward solves that? Because currently we have Burwood being represented by someone from Avonhead, for example, um, and that kind of thing. So it doesn't necessarily solve that problem anyway. No, nothing, nothing solves that problem unless it's legislated for that you need to live in the, in the area that you're standing for. So, I mean, it's, just, it's going to be a problem either way. Yep, thanks. All right. Look. Thank you very much for your submission, Chrissy, and it's um, it, very in-depth and a lot of detailed analysis gone into it. I'll, um, I'll correct my maths. <coughs> <laughs> Thank you, Councillor Penny. Um, and and resend that slide so that you, that you have it, or I'm sure that the, um, the, the, the staff could change that to 25%. You could change that, couldn't you? I did four out of 12, not four out of 16 in my yeah. hurry. All right. Thank you very much. Uh, the next submission is, is it Tracy Bunk from the Hi Hi Broomfield Community Development? Sorry. 